Hey, it's Chris. Your boy is back. Are you ready? Oh, <laughs> gonna get myself in trouble. Gonna try not to. We're gonna do it. Lots of big campaigns to cover. Lots of things to talk about. Whole separate video dedicated to the whole. I leave for one week and game found sprouts up a new interface, web page, whatever. Right? Who? You ready? It's gonna be spicy. Let's go. So here it is, right? This is the new page. We have spotlights. We have a bunch of other stuff over here, which is really interesting that they highlight accepting stretch pay over there as a, as a, as a real qualifier for filtering, right? And then you slowly get down here. And again, there, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just what is making us the most money? Let's pop those up at the top, right? I mean, Three of these are live. One of them's not because, again, it's the biggest one there. And then uh, just kind of whatever, whatever. Explore random stuff. But don't worry. They also happen to be some of the bigger ones. Again, you know, the algorithm that goes into this. Uh, yeah, right. OK, uh, you finally see something that you maybe don't know down here when it gets to the upcoming ones. But late pledges, everything else. And, you know, again, whole dedicated video to ranting on this, I think. But rankings right not even not even just calling it something else but we're gonna go full on rankings here full on rankings not only in terms of funding but audience because i actually clicked on one or two of these other ones over here and it's just like gains i guess maybe ish and then you can do seven days or 30 days and again audience in 30 days anyway take that for what you will and then all time and guess what's going to pop up an all time list right just again kind of makes you go okay what's the point of this okay again i'm gonna try not to get sidetracked here because right that's not why you're tuned in you want to see me talk about other stuff let's go now let's go dc superheroes united simon's project of the month now, I'm filming this in the afternoon, the evening, I should say, after it launched. So you're going, okay, Chris, it hasn't even been 12 hours. They've got $500,000. Is that good or bad? Truth be told, folks, I don't have a clue. You're trying to draw, you know, a trajectory with two dots, but needing uh, five or six more to actually show you where this is going. Because is this good? Is this bad? Is this somewhere in between? Truth be told, eh, it's a little less than I expected. At the same time, why? Or will it achieve those heights that Marvel has? And truth be told, I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's going to. Because, well, not because you've got United Saturation, which you do. Not because you've got Simon Saturation, which you do. But because I don't think people like DC as much. Right? Them's fighting words. You guys can fight me in the comment section down below, right? Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me people like DC as much or more than Marvel. And guess what? You're wrong. Because they don't. Because otherwise, box office, movie style things, show style things would reflect it. Comic books, anyone? DC is definitely secondary to Marvel in all of those aspects. This is no different. Again, don't get me wrong. You put out something cool. I think this is one that people are going to look back, you know, six months after it's delivered and go, man, I should have gotten that. Actually, you know what? Let's let's rephrase that. Asterix. I think this is one that a month after, a month within it being delivered, people are going to go, I should have gotten that. Man, I wasn't a big DC fan, but... So, yeah, I'm... Well, there you can go, right? Above my head. Backer number 4,191. I am doing the $100 pledge. Because if you know anything about this, you get the first expansion that goes with the pledge levels with the CMON Marvel United. And I say that because this is the one that is least half-baked. <laughs> This is the one that they are putting the most effort into. And therefore, it has always been the best expansion of any of the expansions that have come out with the previous campaigns. You know, Multiverse is still being delivered, which again, you know, come on, Simon, come on, right? West Coast is like getting their shipment right now. If you're on East Coast, like East Coast isn't even going to be delivered to the port until like literally a month later. Like... What kind of logistic? Anyway, that's a whole nother issue. Teen Titans. People don't like Teen Titans. I have no problem with them. Ever seen the Teen Titans show? It's a great show. Anyway, this is what you're getting. And it's exclusive. Crowdfunding exclusive. Look, they had to change it. Ah, anyway, so you're getting the cool stuff. 
you're getting characters, you're getting equipment to go along with it. You can see that they've got different hands, different forms here with Beast Boy. Superman starts and keeps two cards in his hand all the time because of like his invulnerability or whatever. You're getting the equipment that came from the first time around. You're getting slight adjustments to the BAMs. There's not a whole lot of other details. You've got all the modes. 14 centimeters tall okay i don't need that but screw it again so the question at my point is just will i do the all-in and how many how many other freaking waste of money and fomo expansions are there going to be you know day one they're just throwing your stretch goals down below so far right you've got all this stuff which again truth be told i was wondering how far they were going to reach down into the pocketbooks to get this one Booster Gold, Red Tornado, a lot of the basics, right? Parasite, a little bit further out there. But then which one of these is not like the other? Black Mask? Huh? Okay. Okay, right? Not not bad at all. Oh, completely okay with Black Mask. And your miniatures will never look like that, so you just skip over this part as a whole. The interesting thing on the video side of things is Board Game Co. actually has a review. I can't remember the last Simon campaign that actually had a review on it, right? Pretty much everything from them has been a small gameplay and one or two previews. So that's a big change. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Does it change your mind? Probably not. If you're either in, you're in. But the rest is all preview stuff. So no rule book. That's the only part I'm a little pissed about because they've had the rule book out in the other campaigns. Is it that similar enough that when they you know say that this is the United System as you click over here, that it's not going to be dramatically enough different, right? And that's going to be the other thing that you maybe make the argument against, right? Is if you have the other stuff, this isn't going to be dramatically different. And I guess I didn't really see on the anywhere on this page. And to truth be told, I didn't really look too hard. I'm biased towards this and I'm biased, uh, you know, for getting it in that sense. Ooh, I get a power girl for free. Uh, that I would say that this is, you know, just not different enough. And you're not going to need this over one of the other ones. Again, because I'm biased and I'm simping for it. And I don't really need to look at the page and know that I'm going to buy it. That compatibility wise, I didn't see anywhere on here that it's compatible. So that would be my only thing. But it says United System here. So I would imagine why couldn't you? Why couldn't you? Except for maybe Power Creep. Because United Game System, they're calling it now. Right? That's like what Exceed has done. That's like what Unmatched has done, where they've gone to the system rather than, you know, title with expansion, right? So anyway, I'm simping. I'm, it's going to cost me way too much money. But this is one of the few locks for me of the year, of the century, of the week, of the collection, if you will. Biased simping. Next game. Let's do it, right? Let's go to Brink. You missed my video. You didn't watch my video. I'm a crowdfunding peddler. You know, it gave me, and some of you commented in the comment section, some of you got my references, some of you didn't. Like, this is Catan in space-ish. Asterix, right? Because you're playing down three ships, a la your settlements at the beginning of Catan, getting whatever resources they get to touch, and one of them only touches one, one of them touches two, one of them touches three... But the premise is exactly the same in a worker placement light style vibe. There's about six different ways then you're going to be action optimizing, resource managing, but then this pseudo blind bidding at the end of every round three times where you're going to be mathing it up to determine which two of the factions are actually the most powerful and then also subsequently multiplying by the coefficient of the drag number uh, pi squared with a C value algorithmically. You know what I'm saying. I'm just saying stuff for the sake of saying stuff, right? But you multiply the round points that you get by the number of power that you have. And I think the concept is there, but I think it's gonna fall flat for a lot of people. So unless you are the exact target audience, and a target audience, again, as the other main divisive mechanic in Brink, of negotiating because you're gonna be placing these tokens, these ships down, like I mentioned. But half your resources you might be getting on a turn might be resources that if you don't immediately trade before the end of your turn, you are going to lose completely. No, no, I'm not lying about that. No, I'm not making that up. Yes, I played it. Yes, I had the rule book. Yes, you can check it out on this page. And that's a bit divisive. Are you having people at your group that are going to be willing to be that dynamic? Frankly speaking, I don't. And I think a lot of people are going to look at this just like they looked at Oath, just like they're looking at Tanglewoods, which we'll talk about afterwards, uh, right after this one. 
that they're saying, I want to love this rather than do you actually love it for what it is? Are you going to get it played for what it is? Not because 37 of the biggest people are telling you that this is the best game of all time of 2023 of all time of top 10 lists of whatever, right? That's not what matters. This game has to be right for you. And I, um, I actually put a, a crazy quote on here. Truth be told, I haven't looked at this page, right? At the time of me filming this. But I, I said, you know what? This game is revolting! Revolting in the sense that you're actually one of the mechanics that's called revolt in the game. And the alternative definition to revolt, not as in disgusting, but as just changing of what you're maybe used to in that sense. And revolting, again, is another unique mechanic that they're bringing here, because if you cause a depletion of a resource during the round, everybody at the table loses half of those color of resources. So if I need four green, I only get two green from the supply and the supply is empty. Guess what? I lose one of the two green I just got, if that's all the green I have, but then everybody else at the table loses half their green and has to put them back into the supply. Is that going to be something that you're going to love as a hate drafting, take that style of manner? If it's not, again, you need to be aware of this. I don't think it's a bad mechanic. I just don't think people pay close attention sometimes to those nuances nowadays and we get caught up in the deluxification hype cycle of things, right? We'll talk about that in a second again with 20 Strong Tanglewoods. So, I mean, you can have plenty of super positive quotes on here. You can have plenty of super positive comments, but are they applicable to you? Are they? By the way, I did this Brink Terminal online before the campaign launched. I did a bunch of it, so don't don't ask me. I'm not good at it, though. That's a whole other thing. So you can find some of the goals, uh, social goals, stretch goals. But, I mean, again, like, uh, you're not seeing necessarily, as I was scrolling but not paying attention and also looking at the camera, like, what you're actually doing mechanically, as I just mentioned to you, right? Again, it's deluxified. This, 20 strong, chip theory, over-the-top deluxifications, over-the-top, unnecessary, completely cost-inefficient bling for your collection. And you know what? If you want to do that at the same... I'm, I'm not saying that as a negative. I'm saying that as a matter of fact. That is the niche in which you enjoy. You know, because again, truth be told, right? If you want to spend $100 on a game that is going to get played a ton more than five $20 games that aren't, you know what? Do you, I'm okay with that. But it's the deluxification and over saturation in general and the hobby that is not the good thing. If people voted with their wallets, but they vote with their grass is greener, which is the whole, uh, you know, sort of uh, game found page thing over here, right? This is not here for you folks, this comparison down here. This is to make you look and see, oh, other people are backing this. Oh, other people are really interested in this. Oh, other people are throwing tons of money at this in the last seven days. So I better be doing it too. That's why that's there. It's not for consumers. It's not for regular backers like yourself. That's okay. That's a whole nother video, like I said. So again, finally, you get down here to the how to play. I give them kudos. The rule book is out here. You can check that out. Two player mode. Again, I said this in my review. You didn't watch it, but it's in my review. I said two player modes for games like this that require three. I am not a huge fan of the AI system, the Automa system that goes along with this. I'm just not, right? It's never going to simulate exactly what it would be proposing or wanting to do at the core crux of this game because you can't dynamically trade. You can't hate trade or hate draft other people that are going to be the main make it or break it do i enjoy this mechanic in that way you can't as cool and as good and as solid as you can make modes like this right now i mean it's just my soapbox in that sense where every game doesn't need to support every single player count period right so I don't care if it works or not. It's my bias. So you can check out some gameplay there. You can check out tons of video content, I'm sure. Asymmetric factions, asymmetric objectives, tile laying exploration as you're laying them on the edge of these tiles and you're getting your resources. Uh, you've got your shields that block what other people are seeing. You've got the cool dynamic that I really kind of loved of the cargo versus the railgun. So how do you want to upgrade? Do you want more power? Do you want more resource collection? You can stratify 
or change each of your individual ships in that way. Again, deluxify the blinging heck out of it right now from that aspect of things. And there you go. That's tons and tons of stuff on here. So check it out if you want and see if it's really right for you. That's what you need to check. And that's what I'm always, always, always preaching for, whether it's this game, big games, small games, big companies, small companies, anything else in between. Okay, we're going Tanglewoods, 20 strong. I said it, right? I mean, the cards and the chip that went along with this, it's surprisingly, you know, again, I'll say this with the first time around, it's a very expensive card game. It's not unreasonably priced for three decks in that sense that went along with it. But at the same time, I kind of went, okay, you know, the dice are extra sparkly. The chip that goes along with this that makes them, you know, sort of a token chip in the chip theory side of things was, you know, not really necessary as much. I'm going to get a lot of flack for that in the comment section, I know. And they're giving you a free little Universal Heroes pack, which, again, I... As someone who reviewed the first time around, I didn't think the heroes were that great cross compatibility wise. Like they just didn't always match up because the core systems of each of the first three were so different that it just didn't line up as well. So it's great that these are universal, but I'd also make the argument that I don't think you're ever going to use these three. Boom, them's fighting words, right? So that'd be my only concern. And they've got the Tanglewoods base pledge, the Dex bundle. You can get everything else, complete gameplay bundle. I'm sure the strategist sold out in like 0.8 seconds for Autobot refreshers that are clicking on it and want to spend, I don't know, five, eight hundred dollars whatever it is nowadays. Again, I haven't even looked because, again, I don't really care. And you know what? You shouldn't be doing that unless you absolutely and utterly have loved, loved every single game that they have ever, ever, ever put out there all in your collection. You've played them all 30 times. Your H uh, value is 77 and whatever it may be, right? Again, being facetious, but there's there's such a disconnect, I think, with that as a whole, as good of deal as it is. Because again, I'm not a deal person in that way. I don't buy things to get a great deal. If I did, I'd own a lot more than what you see around me. And I don't. And I don't want to. I'd love to get rid of most of this for a good deal. Single player. Again, right? Part of me would love if they adapted this to a two player. Part of me also, as I just said, trying not to be hypocrite in chief this week, says that, you know what? I hope they stay single player. Stay with what you've got going on. Don't you know mess with something that's really good if it's really good by trying to adapt it to people like me who are grease and squeaky wheel sort of situation, right? I want the two player. So go with it, keep it, and that's okay. I'll be completely transparent here. The only reason I would be backing this would be to review it before other people got their copies to get clicks. That is the only reason I would be backing this at this point. I, you know, it was okay. It was okay. I didn't think it was great balanced. I didn't think some of this difficulty was where it needed to be in terms of just absolutely getting snookered immediately, getting cooked without a whole lot of chance some games. And it just wasn't a lot of fun, two of the, well, one of the three, at least, of the originals. Is this one going to be better? Probably. Is this offering completely unique, different mechanics than uh, the way they manipulated the cards and the dice in the first one? Yeah, absolutely. Is it going to change your mind if you didn't like the system in the first place or you're not a solo player? No, it's not. Not one bit whatsoever. Nope. No dice. <laughs> pun there. Dad pun. I didn't even think about that one. Going with what they're going, right? Flippable cards, dice-driven mechanics, all sorts of different stuff with the core system that they've got here. Red deck, yellow deck, white deck, is it? I forget. So again, right? Like I said, this is really interesting. This is the most or one of the most accolade driven pages I've seen in a long time. And it's just kind of interesting, you know, again, what this means to people. I, I'm always curious. Does this influence you whatsoever? Because part of this and the part that some of these are so explicit and so niche that it's almost like, again, uh, our hobby is super good at creating lists of lists, right? Because that's what you click on. I want a list of list of a list of this, you know, super, super niche game. And that's okay because again, it's what people want, right? Unique mechanics, unique challenges, collect them all. Again, I hate that. 
You know, that reminds me more TCGS. Gotta collect them all. Gonna get myself in trouble. That was right. It is a white deck. Uh, white, yellow, red. Cloudspire 2025, they're teasing you. They'll probably announce the other two at the end of this campaign so you can see. But, I mean, at least that is 2025, I guess. So, what other of their IPs haven't they previously covered? So, that'd be the other guess for that one. And then maybe a third new one to go along with it. Uh, again, uh, everybody that's big loves this game, so you should love it too, is what that tells you at the top. They're doing three different things, done differently, if that makes sense, with the way the Tanglewoods decks are set up here. Uh, you're going up against creatures that are going to either be alone or in tandem that you're going to be having to manage through the dice manipulation with the dice pools that are selective as you're going along. You got the money where you're going to actually be able to bribe enemies out of the way uh, to get rid of them as you're venturing. But if you do so well, it might be done at the wrong time because also that's how you get your rewards in this game in the first place, including more money to bribe more people later. So that's the big one there. Merchant is going to be giving you upgrades that you can buy as well. And then items that you can do in addition. Base game, uh, the red rules, interestingly enough, only the red deck rules are out here right now. You can see your uh, little red riding hood, some fantasy-esque version, traversing through the forest, trying to get to the cottage and the big bad wolf to win the game. Minions slavering wolves against the main wolf himself, right? And each one left alive essentially powers up the boss, so it's very similar to one of the other original ones where the more that was left, the more powerful they become. So minion turns out to be blighted and upgrades and things like that. And so gameplay overview again, uh, engagement map forest cards flip to nighttime in the golden woods. Bears are going to be coming out though. The bears you can push into the deck that you can eventually encounter and slowly get their abilities into play, but their abilities are really strong. So you have to be careful when to do that uh, via rounds. You're going to be selecting which map and which tableau to draw from as well as to engage with. And then the yellow gameplay overview down here. Uh, and then the white as we get down here with the whispering woods or the white woods. I don't know why I said whispering. It's just another W word, right? Uh, take the enemies you defeat, place it under one of the stepmother's castle cards. And they also get put to later use depending on what the symbology is until you get to the evil stepmother. So overview there. Baba Yaga campaign expansion. Play with all three decks to mini campaign. Link them together. And you just get a better deal so again one for 30 or all three for 60 so that's basically the same price only you're actually getting this little expansion deck too so i guess better deal from that aspect of things although again uh what's the difference here the complete tangle woods experience the decks only bundle uh uh what Ah, that's what it is. This gives you all the junk that goes along with it. I was really confused. I had to click on this. You get the base rules, you get the tracker and the chips and the theme dice, and this just gives you the decks only. So maybe a good deal. You know, again, I have mixed feelings, right? Like they're not giving me all the extra junk that, you know, sometimes standalone expansions do. So I guess that's good. But take that for what you will. Again, $750. People just throw money at this, you know, for a good deal later on. You get a little bit of upgrades, whatever they're doing, a little bit of extra cartage. So that's why you're getting it on the crowdfunding campaign. Price holds true. But again, I'd make the argument, uh, if it's not a game for you, it's not going to change your mind. So Tanglewoods, it's doing really well. So we'll see where it goes from here. Terrorscape, the putrefied enmity. That's actually a tough say right there. $500,000. It's pretty good, right? For a game that is getting, again, all the acclaim, right? I didn't pull up the Marvel United uh, portion of things like I did on the 20 Strong thing, but you know all those quotes around there. Number one game, best game, 17th ranked, whatever, right? Legion of Games, never on there. But um, again, that's one of my top games of all time. Anyway, Terror Escape, though. You know, you got the diorama-esque one versus all horror-themed game here as a whole, right? As I said in my news video i was gonna say my preview video but i know previews right i'm not smart enough to get paid for this gig seal of excellence board game pop top top whatever people love it blah 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 one versus all it's one versus all folks do you like one versus all with this asymmetry it's final girl with one versus all instead of just solo is that okay with you do you want to deluxify it you know sun drop minis storages foils foils ah Foils are the new coins. Anyway, I don't know. Do you need any of this stuff? Is it more like Final Girl where you just can kind of mix and match? Is it more like United where, again, you either 
are in or you're not. I'm not going to get myself in too much trouble here. Again, I'm a hypocrite, right? Like, I want all the United stuff, but I tell you that this is going to be too much for you, right? So I don't know. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you freaking want. But you better love this game like I love United, right? At least that's what you can say. I can play United. I get it played. And I love it. If that doesn't, you know, sound like you with any of these other games, whether it's this or 20 Strong or whichever one I cover or whichever one I bash or whichever one I love, don't do it, right? Screw crowdfunding exclusives. Screw deluxifications. Screw it if you can't get it played. I don't care what the FOMO or other people might make right are telling you. If it's not for you, screw it all. All right, I told you we're going hot and heavy this video. I mean, 90 bucks for the new content. <laughs> Save $3, but pay for shipping. I don't know. I mean, doesn't include miniatures, deluxified stuff, all the gameplay content. Again, $200, you know, five boxes. Okay, sure. Yeah, I got $100 right now for two boxes. Well, actually, take that back. Three boxes on Marvel United. So it's probably three more boxes, six boxes versus five boxes. Okay, sure, whatever. I don't have a clear. I don't have a clue. Whatever. Do what you want. I mean, again, like people like this game, but I think you have to be a horror theme. And if someone's going to yell at me in the comment section, you don't need to be a horror lover. Chris, you can play this without being a horror lover. You've got your asymmetric killers. You've got your asymmetric, uh, you know, people running away from them. I think it looks like a really fun game. This reminds me of Return to Dark Tower, where I'd probably really love this game. I would be happy with someone else owning it and bringing it to game night, though. So that'd be my issue. And again, this one... Just like Marvel United, uh, you know, miniatures eh, could probably pass. Would probably not mind it uh, just being, you know, cubes. But you know what? You got to deluxify your deluxified and deluxifying your deluxify. So, again, how do you play? Well, you've got your killer's goals. You're trying to just kill everybody, right? You get your deck of cards, different asymmetric style of hunt. Sort of like a Dead by Daylight, if you will, that we were talking about comparatively in the past as well to give it another vibe. Uh, you just trap them, fear them, kill them. So... Good guys, though, they have actions. They're trying to get away, search for weapons and keys to escape. And, well, if you don't do it right, they're going to find you and get you. So here's all the stuff, the testimonials and the videos and all that stuff. So, again, people love it. It's killing it, actually. I mean, $500,000 is $500,000, and that's pretty impressive. So for a game that, you know, I kind of just poo-pooed and passed by the first time around i remember i don't even remember if i covered it the first time around i'm sure i did I cover everything but it's really doing well so if it is your vibe give them a look-see so next up from plaid hat going to crowdfunding the third in the line of the crossroads sequels ask of your what was the other one forgotten waters and then freelancers and now you're getting wandering galaxy again this is one of those though that begs the question why crowdfunding interestingly enough i didn't actually know this beforehand but this is their first created over on crowdfunding here so summer wars 2 right a uh, video coming out in the next month before the end of the month hopefully talking about my updated thoughts on the new summer wars expansions and everything else in between including the app but it's a crossroads game right this is very reminiscent very reminiscent of freelancers freelancers is a, is a solid game but it's very light it's very whimsical and it's very fancy fantastical in the sense that it's skill check based and it's dice driven skill check based now with the rule book here again i wish this was a little bit more apparent on the page just up front right like if you have either of these other two why would i get this one comparatively is this just third edition 3.0 is better is this actually that much different is it the choose your own adventure theme style of things I love it that they've got the rule book up here and the big component difference that I can see is going to be, well, you have command centers that you're going to be utilizing as your action deck as well is going to be how you're going to be doing more of the mitigation to go along with it. So again, station boards and weapons and device cards. So those are going to be more of your differences, the jobs and events and the location exploration. It, you know, when you pull up the page here of the rule book for that aspect of things, it is very eerily representative or similar in these two pages right here of freelancers. So if you like freelancers, it's probably going to be a pretty safe bet for you to enjoy this one to some capacity. It's just going to be, again, your mileage may vary depending on which one you like the best. So it's a campaign, location, book, a spiral bound situation, if you're familiar with the first one or two in the first place, traveling, completing, and completing campaigns in addition. So here's the big skill check thing that we talked about. But in this case, what you're gonna be doing is revealing three cards from your draw pile, playing them face up, resolving them and their effects, and then, well, resolving any play effects that are going to give you icons on the cards that match the skill being checked. So 
Honestly, I like that better than freelancers with just the, the random dice, the random dice driven element of things. But the other aspects of things, the upgrades, the experience, the, you know, as they say here, catchphrases and nicknames to be earned uh, and you write them down. So is that appealing to you? It's light. It's not super serious. It's just a game to have fun with. And do you enjoy that? Again, the reason uh, you back it on crowdfunding is more of my question mark right now. So let's see. Crossroad series, designer diaries, three paid videos. If you want to look at some paid video content, a few add-ons from, well, this and the other ones that we mentioned. Um, and then finally, down at the bottom, why back now? Well, you know, I, I have a hard time believing that this is going to sell for $70 at any sort of retail side of things. So that'd be the question. I'd say you're doing early entry and supporting a small publisher from that aspect. That's the main reason. And if you want to do that, go for it. Wandering Galaxy. How on gosh golly green earth do we have another Stefan Feld collection here? But this is the classic special edition niche best of 2024 edition that we came out with this year edition. Seriously? Seriously? Seriously. 46 grand though, because people are still willing to get this, you know, different edition. And eight games under the belt, nine and ten are getting ready. One through four are in high demand. We decided to reprint them. But don't worry, you can get it slightly different with double layer player boards, extra wooden components, and of course the great gameplay and all the stuff that goes along with it for I'm not even sure if that's a good price. I just know there's already like three editions of this out there in the first place. So the fact that this is coming as like a third or fourth time around, you're finally doing this and why some of this stuff wasn't there in the first place and why you would ever get the upgrades that went along with it or the matchingness of these in the first place without knowing that these were going to be great games for you just boggles my mind. And just the delivery and the timing of all of these other crowdfunding campaigns. I mean, it's fine, right? And all of these are relatively well-known products at this point in terms of Hamburg, Amsterdam, New York, and Marrakesh. Interestingly enough, I hear the most, and I saw the most on the trade market in terms of desiring for Marrakesh. Hamburg's probably second, Amsterdam's third. I've never seen New York show up anywhere. So again, they're Stefan Feld remakes with slight nuanced differences than their predecessors. I'm going to leave it at that, and you can check it out for yourself. So then we're going over to Historica Arcanum Cults of London from Metis Creative. $64,000 impressive still of a ten thousand dollar funding goal and this is a little bit of an action programming area control vibe if you will i believe you're playing it over three rounds i could be wrong i'm blending and blurring things together this week because again you know got a week off didn't feel like editing it all week and that's why we had less videos out this week so you know what hit me up in the comment section down below and you can help me edit some more uh you got this deck building asymmetry though that you're utilizing with an area control hybrid because essentially what you're doing is you have uh card holders anywhere between they say zero and three so you must be able to manipulate or even lose your card holders to pro action program on a turn-by-turn -turn basis to basically set your operators set your characters into different areas on the map actually you know what i think it's like 13 victory points i think that's how you win with this one we'll pull up the rule book in a half second and you're eliminating opponents gathering these resources from these sites and potentially even and this is going to be the you know most divisive element manipulating other people's plans in the first place because when you set these holders out in phase one with your cards on them then phase two if you pay certain intel resources you can actually look at other people's and mess with them and then they can't rearrange those but then that's where phase three comes in is then people can rearrange their other plans if now people know what they're going to be doing in that aspect round four phase four is going to be more of your combat where you're going to go head to head in these areas and decide who wins and who battles and who loses five is well taking those actions at those areas after all the dust has settled six is your refresh rinse and repeat again i love this tracker to tell you where this falls right i i just like that i think it's helpful for people because i think sometimes even with our own biases we're not great judges of that you know talk about the more recent discussion on arcs where people are like this is the best game that's ever been made in the history of 2024 freaking it's july folks get over yourself you know because nothing else good is going to be coming out the rest of the year it's already been decided by powers that be anyway being facetious and joking but that's what it feels like anyway uh you have co-op mode you got versus mode you've got all mode you've got solo mode and three to four player showdown sounds a little chaotic co-op sounds maybe more like my thing even the one versus all as you know 
They lay out everything here that you're getting, as well as a couple expansions, which give you two extra factions to choose from with the asymmetric choices that you begin with of four in the core box. Exclusivity, a dice tower, and gameplay add-ons. You're not going to get the deluxe anywhere else, and this says $50 less. Whew, base tier, 80 bucks. Deluxe tier, whew, 160 bucks. Ooh, that's a pretty penny, and the extra expansions are going to be 30 bucks each, so... I mean, not a cheap factoring in of what you're doing here. Again, here are your operators giving you some asymmetry, giving you some intense tactically and well as strategically based situations. Your secret rituals are how you're going to be scoring points at these locations as a whole, but you're going to have magic cards as well as other ways of mitigating at said locations in the first place. So the rule book here is actually pretty decent. I don't really know how the interactions are going to go because there's not a whole lot of examples in the rule book of like some of the magic and those sorts of things. But they tell you right here the four ways that you're actually going to be scoring. Control two of the locations, score your secret rituals, get 10 insight tokens, or any asymmetric faction condition as a whole. I was right. 13 points right there above my head. So, yeah, it looks like I'm not completely blanking on the rules this week. There you go. Flow of the game. Again, shows you through those things that I just mentioned, all that stuff. The anomalies, I didn't mention that, but horrors, uh, depending on what happens at those combat sites if you're going at the same area. So miniatures, uh, let's go into the gameplay and review. Um, I'm here, apparently. Uh, reviews, coming soon. Well, I mean, again, like why launch if you don't have any of the content? It'd be nice. Uh, but you have the rule book, so I'll give you that. And, you know, again, I'd worry that having all of those modes, that one or two of them are going to just be tremendously more up your ilk and you're going to be paying for an extra mode or two that you're never going to use. How do you feel about that? Is that a big deal? Not a big deal? Who cares? You're not listening to this part of the video anyway, so I can say whatever I want. Ha <laughs> ha! Just kidding. I hear you. Historica, Arcanum, Cults of London. Give it a look-see. Tell them you sent you. Now, rolling board game bags and artist illustrated playbats. Dum, dum, dum. It's from All Play. Uh, again, only about 70 grand, which is, you know, pretty good, but also a little bit lower than I would have expected. And to be truth be told, I really like Devin Rue's playmat here. I think it looks really, really freaking cool. You know how you've made it on the media side of things? Companies no longer only send you board games, they send you accessories. That's how you know you've made it, right? P.S. Spoilers, I haven't made it yet. Ha! <laughs> just kidding um i'm happy with where i'm at uh, but you know again like this is the stuff that is a little bit more expensive that is a little bit more overhead wise and so that's why i'm jokingly saying you know you've made it if they're willing to send you this as opposed to just you know a generic copy of a game right <laughs> anyway i think this is cool the coolest thing about this is the telescopic handle with the wheels because i have a board game bag that i just brought on vacation with me and it was fine i mean it's probably about the size or even like slightly larger than this one because I can carry probably about, you know, well, it's probably slightly smaller. I can carry about five or six uh, Tucky to Ride size games and shoulder straps and carrying handle, but it didn't have that. So it's kind of a pain to do that. So I like that aspect of things. And I really like this uh, topography based playmat. I think it's just kind of cool. And again, right, like quotes from people about bags. <laughs> it always cracks me up. So I, I love it though. I mean, all play puts out a quality product. It's just, do you actually have a need or a necessity for this? And truth be told, if you've got one, it's probably more than enough because uh, you always think you're going to play games more than you're going to play at, when you bring them to places. And you're never going to play most of the ones you bring in the first place. So you never really have a need for more than one bag, despite anyone telling you anything otherwise, unless you go to those like media content creator uh, game weekends that I've never been invited to. I'd like to get invited once. It's not like I'd necessarily be able to go, but it's sort of like, you know, just being invited kind of makes you feel good on the inside, right? Right? You know what I'm talking about. You have friends. More than me, probably. Anyway, um, edge stitching, padding, I don't know. Where's the one I was looking at, though, so I can show you? I mean, that's fine. Eono tools. I mean, that's not my personal aesthetic, right? That's fine too. That's a nice little uh, garden aesthetic space. It's kind of cooler looking, but this just seems cool. Like I could look at this on the table. Now it gives me like sort of the Middle Earth vibes and that's kind of why I like it. So give Devin Rue some support. Give him a shout out. Tell him, again, tell him Leech sent you. <laughs> no one knows who I am anyway. So random Amazon user, product quality, shipping is pretty decent and you can get it from Allplay if you want. It comes with a medallion too if you want as well. So get the medallion before anybody else. FOMO, your grass is greener friends in that way. Board game bags. Deep regrets. This is the botany of the month. This is the canvas of the month, if you will. The one that I told you, if you were paying attention to that video, which, no, again, no one watches my videos, so um, 
I said this was going to be the Dark Horse of the Month. I called it when I was talking about the upcoming games for July. It was on there. You can go look at that video. You can literally hear me say Dark Horse. And it's got $400,000 as a lighter filler game. Boom, your boy knocked it out of the park again. So what is it doing though? And why shouldn't you get it though at the same time? Just kidding, just kidding. What I'm saying though is like I said earlier in the video, it has to be right for you. And I compare it to Botany and Canvas in the sense that just because all of a sudden some game has broken out that you weren't expecting to in terms of funding, it doesn't mean that other people are getting something and onto something that you aren't. It's just that, again, some people ride that train, that gravy train, that hype train, and some people don't, and you need to do what's right for you. So with this game, it's a little bit of a pressure luck, sort of card driven, uh, slowly get more powerful as you get more mad, but also potentially have more detriments go along style of things as you're diving deeper through these decks with a dice based system you're slowly gathering regret cards which are going to stumble you into deeper sides of madness which is going to actually increase your points because you're going to go from fair fish to foul fish that you're going to be collecting and then using the multiplicative tables in order to score them but if you have too many or if you have the most at the end of the game you actually have to lose one of your cards because you're going to be taking these cards playing these cards having these cards available but also mounting your fish just like any good hunter or uh you know sort of person would a uh, side note here is a quick side uh, tangent i slept in a room last week on vacation with all of my family that's not the part of the story that's important but this is a hunting lodge right this is a hunting lodge that they rent out to whoever and we had about 22 to 25 people in this place at all times and again not the part of the story that matters where i'm going with this but the hunting side of things there were 17 17 displays of trophy and by trophy i mean forms of antlers within just my family's small double bunk bed room. Think about that for a second. Anyway, back to the game. So unsettling fishing board game created. I mean, that's probably probably an apt description. True. Anyway, right. 40 bucks, uh, 50 bucks, 40 pounds. Who I almost screwed that one up. So, I mean, you're fishing, you're pressing your luck, you're going and it's straightforward but it's not gonna be as interactive as you may like. And it's going to be uh, more asymmetric solitaire, if you will. But again, I don't think that's a negative. I think that's just a be more aware. Research, reveal, trigger where you're going, paying with the cost of the dice to catch the fish, or well, can't and you know get a doink and try again later. You get a little expansion here with uh, some of the content as well with the extra stuff, solo and co-op mode, and the rule books on the page. The aesthetic is nice and Again, is it your ilk, though? I think it's cool. I wasn't kidding. I saw this one coming. I I'm patting myself on the back all I can this video. Uh, there's enough content, and you can check it out. So, again, Indie, do it if it's for you. Deep Regrets. This should be the name of my channel instead. Then, Rise of Battle, 50 bucks from the folks who bought you the ARC game from a couple years ago on crowdfunding. Euro game with deck building and worker placement. And what you're doing in this is essentially you start out with the same 10 deck of cards, 10 cards in your deck, if that makes more sense. And I said it better the second time, I'll leave the first time in there anyway. And you play five of them on a round, and they're going to have double actions on them, top and bottom parts. And so you just choose one or the other. Play all five of your cards, take your turn, rinse and repeat. Play that, um, you know, essentially over a certain number of rounds, and whoever scores the most points over those certain number of rounds wins. And they're going to be action resource worker placement s because you're also going to be controlling places on the board where you're laying some of the tiles that are going to require adjacency in order to get more points at the end of the round as you're scoring them. You're using also the deck building mechanism is because you're starting out with 10, but you're going to slowly make your deck more asymmetric in terms of the things that you would like to do going forward. And that's what's going to make it slightly different. Adjacency there is going to give you what you need in order to win. Preview, 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 preview. Everybody's paid there, so you can check out those if you want. It talks to you how you're going to be upgrading, placing, and moving. And, well, you're going to move an elephant, though. That's kind of cool. Uh, but that's the gist of the game. So rulebook is there. A uh, little expansion rulebook is there. And how to play and how to play and how to play. So uh, no reviews, but plenty of paid content. If you missed my video last week getting myself in trouble talking about paid content, well, you can laugh at me in the comment section down below again and tell me I'm a fool and hypocrite. But anyway, it's doing really well. And you know what? If it's for you as a slightly different twist of, I kind of like the idea of it, right? Deck building, worker placement, do an Imperium, anybody? In a slightly different way with some tile as well, giving me a little bit of like almost Teotihuacan vibes. A completely different way, horrible comparison, but I went with it because it's off the top of my head. That is Rise of Babel. 
Next up, Small City. The Arcologies expansion. I'm going to be careful there with that. Conquering Space. Don't be fooled. Small Cities. Weight is nearly four on Board Game Geek from a 2016 game with deluxifications as well as deluxifications as well as multiple expansions. This one's too heavy for me, folks. Uh, new buildings, spring expansion sold separately. Variable rounds are going to be new with this expansion. And, well, changing the course of the game as a race, essentially. So standalone initially were the thoughts of this, but now they're doing it while well, incorporated instead limited copies essentially well because it's a small indie style of things and that's just what it works out as all expansions 115 bucks you want the new one though it's going to cost you 15 you want some of the new ones it's going to cost you somewhere in between is this for you english rules are right here i have no idea right this is well outside my wheelhouse and i wish there was a little bit more on the page talking about the game in general because again, it's decently well thought of over on Board Game Geek. Kickstarter, stop being drunk. I hate it when it does that. Uh, but you know, if, even if you go over to the Board Game Geek page, right, it's got a 7.4, and, and that's pretty decent. Again, not kidding there. One to two hours, four weight rating. So take that for what you will, but give them a look see at least. Zoo Tycoon, based on the you know PC game. And the only thing that I really know about this off the top of my head as a second edition with a new expansion, I mean, tell me if you heard about that in the last month or two, right? is that there's a lot going on and that was the big issue and i think you know duplicating sort of a, a civ-esque building you know city-esque building game on a pc where it does a lot of the upkeep and the management for you that's going to be the challenge in a game like this and that's what i saw people uh, you know at least critiquing uh after it came out initially but i mean you know people must love it too as well despite those criticisms because it's got a third of a million dollars folks that's insane now the other insanity here is listed right at the top 460 animal meeples. So I can't even imagine what you're paying for this right now off the top of my head. So let's take a look. Uh, we have, what is that? $84 for the base game standard edition expansion. Woo! Woo! That's an expensive expansion. $84. That's almost my whole pledge for Marvel United. Anyway, everything deluxe is going to cost you $111. Is that actually the new expansion and the base game? No, 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 no. That can't be. No, that's just everything new. Just kidding. The everything deluxe is going to cost you $180. So the base game itself is going to cost you $105. Did I do that math right? No, whatever. You know what I'm doing in the comment section down below. Um, It's a combination of like Arc Nova and building your zoo in a different way, like Civ building-esque. I mean, I love me some animal meeples. Like Amazonia had some great looking ones and these look cool. But again, are you in love with the gameplay for a game again that runs quite heavy overall? Because if you thought I was joking earlier with small cities, well, this has a 4.16 rating on Board Game Geek. So this is heavy, heavy. This is, again, so much going on. And I look at this and I go, those are a lot of meeples. How many of those are you actually going to use? Like, is the replayability there? Or are you just getting replayability or variability for the sake of variability? And I have no idea. Again, like, I'm not going to give you this breakdown because I'm not going to be able to encompass it in a short amount. Like, I'm not a three minute video guy. He does a much better job than I do on any discussion or any sort of thing. And that's why he has so many people who love him. I am not him. I cannot do that as well. But I mean, you're paying for a lot of deluxifications. It's just the deluxifications are prettier because they're colored and smaller and wooden. Are you okay with that? Now, last board game, Zoo Tycoon campaign. Okay. I mean, that's always seems weird to say, right? Like this is all we're going to do. Because if it prints money, I would say that you're going to come back and do it again, right? I hate saying that, but I also don't like these final like warnings, as they say, right? Seven rounds, each consisting of your four different seasons, animals exchanging, demanding, supplying, no game, feeling the same species are represented by 50, 55, 55 different animal meeples, different characteristics, different exclosures, different biomes, different mates, different, you know, tolerances. I have no clue, right? too much going on for me to be able to comprehend it, you know, with any sort of sanity in this video. I would love someone to teach me this game, right? If they brought this and they taught it to me, I'd try it out. 24 new species though, as well with this one. So 79 total new mechanics, including, well, they say not making it overcomplicated, you know, uh, how much more can you add with making a four weight rating even more? So vivarium animals purchased at the building phase or more points. And then the other highlight is the double modular animal exchange. So you can mix and match old and new species for endless combinations. No idea. 
plenty of content though if you want to check it out from the heavier folks that cover it so there's plenty and plenty of videos as well it's expensive though so you're gonna get a little stretch goal so i guess so we'll talk about it we'll see where it goes zoo tycoon um earth and you know sort of environmental and animal friendly themes are all the rage in the last year and a half and this one is no different and it's doing really well give him a look see boom patrol superstar tank battling action arcane style your favorite celebrity tank captain right it's funded so it's boom patrol right what do you need to know about boom patrol animal arena with battlebot mario kart vibes I mean, it's basically just a skirmish style open warfare maneuver with a three card based system of the action cards you're taking of moving, firing or repairing your tanks. And last one standing, right? You got your tank captains with asymmetry. You've got your different command decks in four different colors and you just go with the buildings, the power ups, the destructive efforts, the ruler movement here, range finder that you have to deal with as a skirmish style game. So there's a couple playthroughs as well down here that you can check out what the exclusive promos are as well down here with some asymmetry additionally, and then a little bit of extra gameplay content. I mean, there's a dice tower preview, there's a shelf side playthrough, and there's a rule book. So everything that you're going to need to see. But again, like I'm not a super like spatial skirmish style of person, so it's an easy pass. But I can see where having a little bit lighter, more tactically driven game like this is going to appeal to people. So what is the actual base price though? 35 bucks. That's not bad at all. 49 for the deluxified with hollow floor boards. That'd be my only question, right? Is, is it really worth getting on crowdfunding? And again, as an indie publisher, probably because I don't know how widely available at retail it is. But I mean, again, you're gonna have a print run of somewhere between two and 500 games. So we'll see if it shows up elsewhere. But anyway, give it a look, see as Boom Patrol is out. Then we're covering Wizard Miners, right? Wizard Miners. And then I'm phrasing, we're not going to get ourselves into trouble here. $11,000, it's funded. So you're digging, going through these decks, upgrading your equipment, trying to blast, defeat your opponents, and defend yourself with spell cards to go along with it, but dealing with cavens as you go along in a standard game level with some deluxified meeples as well to go with it. So when you go through your mind deck, that's the depth of your mind. Each turn you dig as deep as you can, trying to get through to the rubble. Clearing the deck means you reach the center of the mine and you win. So you're going to be doing that via the upgrades that I mentioned, discarding them, keeping them, rolling dice to generate numbers, and you're trying to match potentially numbers that you play your starting miner with each round. So take a card from your mind deck, turn it over, and rinse and repeat. Purchase new tools, upgrade your tools with gems, give you more numbers to go through in order to discard in the first place. As you go deeper into your mind, well, is cave in, rubble pit, cards out of the game, cause headaches, and you basically have your cards fall back into your pile with some take that as well. So how do you feel about things? Indie publisher, a little bit of Kickstarter exclusive specials here with the slight deluxified version and anywhere between 50 and 65 bucks is gonna catch your mind and fancy here. We'll go with Wizard Miners. Emerald Skulls, here we go. Thunderworks game set in the world of role player. Press your luck, real-time betting on your opponent's rolls. So using a tumbler, roll your dice, use tricks to place them on the tiers of the skull, but once you place them, you can't go any lower for the rest of your turn. So bust, reap, or rinse. What are you going to do? How do you bet smarter than your opponents? Highly replayable, going to be a lot of push your luck, and they're going to give you a little bit of extra here with some tokens and a playmat available. Seven to eight player expansion. It's a dice rolling game. You can do that. You don't need a deluxified holding chest, though. So what essentially you're doing on your turn is you buy, roll, and place dice on the board. Then the gambler, the person rolling, places bets on the outcome of the tumbler's roll. So as you're the tumbler, you buy and roll and place dice. If you're the gambler, you're betting on what you think they're actually going to roll. Start with three dice, gain more by using your gears. Wager with a range of outcomes before they roll it. You roll it and you see who gets whatever they can. And well, unless they bust, you get to rinse and repeat it. So gambler gains gears. There you go. Here are your standard betting cards that you're going to be using. The regular ones up above here, the left bet, the right bet, the payouts, the jackpots, the descriptions, as well as your advanced betting cards that are going to go along with that. The dice placement in the various levels of the skulls, depending on if you're the tumbler or the better, if you can do that. But your chosen dice have to be placed on each individual level. You cannot separate them out. Uh, there are going to be wild dice and they're going to be wild dice that can be even breaking those rules and playing separately as a whole. Uh, that's kind of how you play. You buy the dice, determine how many you're going to be rolling, put them in the tumbler and see what tumbles out. 
allowing the bets, rolling, placing, and checking to see who gets what. Paying out, depending on where things are at, what the busts were, and how many gears they bet in the first place. And the game ends, well, when the gears are all depleted. You base, you go until that pool empties based on the player count, as we mentioned above, 40 per player, essentially, if you will. Rerolling and betting is totally there, and advanced betting is going to be, well, encouraged. Do you like Press Your Luck? Do you like the role player adventures? 20 bucks is actually, truth be told, a lot less than I thought. Seven to eight player expansion for $5 more. This is one of those I think I'd need to try first. I would be loving something like this because I think a good five, six, even dare I say seven non uh, werewolf party game style of things are rare and few between. So if you can entice from a gameplay standpoint here, that's kind of intriguing. So exclusives probably could go without right now, but Thunderworks is usually a push uh, retail versus crowdfunding. So go support them if you're interested. 70,000 still freaking good. Next up, we're talking Mythic Menu. Well, I mean, it's sort of a little bit of party game in a different way. Essentially, as the chef, you grab one of these cards out and you say, I want a little bit of this, or some of this, and some of that, and maybe none of this. And then other people have to gather resources in the amounts that they think is closest to this. And the person who gets it three times the best, well, wins. That's essentially all you're doing, right? You're jotting down those predicted flavor strengths and taking turns adding ingredients and the pantry that are going to, well, either help you or hinder your opponents. So uh rinse and repeat first chef to gain three stars of whoever gets the highest point total based on uh how their bitches are put together well you win that's it i'm just gonna cover it wanted to mention it it's not quite funded stop it kickstarter it's darn close and probably by the time you're watching it it will be mythic menu then we're talking tack tack not talk here a little bit over 50 percent funded a dice sort of symmetric style where you are going to be rolling your dice lining them up and then slowly moving them across rows depending on how far or columns depending on how far you want them to look and there's going to be win values that go alongside of this and when they add up you get points based off of how many of your dice are used to get that sum total then after you take them off you get to re-roll them place them back out and cleverly rinse and repeat until someone gets all the way to the top scoring and wins so straightforward, a little bit of abstract, a little bit of dice placement, different win values that you can do as a setup to give different variable conditions, and a little bit of one of my other abstract games, uh, Kamisato-esque vibes, where you're moving across to up to your discretion, trying to predict and trying to outmaneuver. So kind of cool, little light game. Just wanted to cover it. Kind of nice in a sense. Again, just give me like Sky Team vibes in a completely different way, just with the aesthetic and the dice on the board there. But anyway, I thought I'd mention it. 24 bucks is 24 bucks, and give them a look-see. Tell them Leech sent you. Next up, we're doing Witchcraft, Moonlight, Magic, and Midnight's expansion. Just literally funded. Like, you know, like, right, like $27 over funding right now at the time of me filming this. So it's an action selection, card-based driven system with two new expansions offering variety and a little bit more complexity to the base game as a whole. So if we skip all of the what's in this and the stretch goals and the new stuff, you get down to the how to play. Asymmetric witches, starting spells that are available to you, crystals or currency that you're going to be utilizing. You start with four and you're going to be gathering ingredients to cast spells. You have at least 20 magic, you win the game. These are the actions you're going to be taking though on a turn by turn basis. Buying cards from the market, getting more crystals, getting a familiar and crystal, spell crystal, or familiar action. You have a grid of three by three that's going to be setting out. And well, take them because not only are they going to have you know victory points available with ingredients not only are they going to have ingredients available to you but also crystals along with them that might be able to be grabbed for free in addition well if they don't have them though you got to pay them to get them so how you do that what action combo system you're driving here that's what you're doing as a whole so let's see what are the actual like now that you've seen the uh gist of it we have the Midnight's expansion, like I mentioned. Five new familiars, more effects on the take that mean side of things, mixed and matched to go along with the base game, more events to go along with it as well. So there you go. Although Midnight's and Moonlight. So we only see the new stuff here uh, from what, Midnight? So there you go. Give it a look-see. Thought I'd mention it. Now we have Zoo Lights, uh, an expansion for Zoo King. You may or may not be familiar with this 2022 game, sort of an action tableau resource management style with, well, you know, the other popular animal theme. $6,000 of $5,000 funding goal. The only problem is, again, it doesn't really tell you how to actually play Zoo King. It just says, hey, you remember Zoo King? Here's a couple of Dice Tower reviews, and then here's an expansion that offers you a little more content, but also there's a little mini expansion if you may have missed it the first time around as well. 
So essentially what you're doing is you have this Tableau, this market Tableau, and you get $1,000 at the beginning of the game and you use that to buy some of the Tableau stuff that's out there. And then you utilize uh, more of the Tableau action systems in one of four different ways, getting two actions of those four every single turn of drawing, buying, or manipulating in order to make a well better Tableau than your opponent as a whole. Slowly as the game gets uh, going and gets revealed as you're drawing cards from the deck, you can not only buy them from the market, but you can draw them from the top of the discard pile. But then as you're drawing from the draw pile, itself awards will randomly come up as you're drawing through this and after you hit the certain number of rewards and trigger the end game you score and you see who has won so it tells you right here additionally what you're getting more animal cards more habitat cards more well zoo cards across the board it changes the winning condition as well and well there you go here's what you need to know about it as a whole right like i said there you go there you go there you go icons booster packs which is the mini expansion here and you can see what you want to get and they'll give you some options as you can well choose your own adventure they're asking for input from backers so uh the icons one and two from that aspect of things mini expansion and a real red panda mascot sticker yeah you want everything though 45 bucks okay add-ons 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 and there you go with a little promos as well so uh yeah 7.5 on board game geek give it a look see mixtape Engine building card game, two to four players, almost funded, $3,800 to $5,000. And it's, a, again, it's an action tableau resource management style of things where you have two sides of a mixtape, A and B, and you're gonna be taking one of three actions on your turn-by-turn -turn basis. One is you're gonna be buying cards from the market and adding them to your hand. Two, you're gonna be playing those cards down either the A side or the B side. Or C, you're gonna be taking three, ah, eh, whatever. Three, you're going to be taking the actions of said cards that are down in your tableau, but the game end trigger is when you have, or someone has, 10 of those cards played. And what the manipulation is in terms of some of the actions is there are going to be a lot of characteristics on these cards, a lot of your little tableau combo system, in order to achieve uh, your mixer goals over here as they go up based on how well you can mix and match and create your love notes. No, seriously, love notes, because your crush needs to have the right tunes, essentially. So 20 page rule book, relatively easy, straightforward. Give it a look, see a couple of videos as well. High quality print and play if you want that thing and you even get a promo pack. So uh, give it a look, see. And again, what are we talking here? Okay, $9 shipping plus the base game price of 19. So and yeah, that's it. So there you go. Mixtape. There you go. Round up over. Not as many games as I thought covering two weeks. And, you know, I, I really parsed through Kickstarter and GameFound, but truth be told, also sometimes I'm sure I missed a couple because it's getting harder and harder to tell and Kickstarter is like a junk thing. And you heard my little rant at GameFound, which is, again, making it harder to find stuff. Although, again, I just hate using all those filters to find stuff sometimes. It's just a little tedious. But maybe I just need to bookmark, you know, the actual filtered page rather than the, like, GameFound underscore, you know, homepage, if you will. I don't know why I said underscore there. I'm... Right? I don't know. News video, upcoming crowdfunding video, uh, still some stuff from the second half and the first half of the year we got to talk about. Best of June still to come. All of the July lookbacks. I have some stuff to do. I've been lazy about filming. I've been lazy about editing this week. I've just not been into it. So hopefully there will be more done this weekend when I have a little bit of extra time off to get some of that out shortly. Yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, probably a mini review video here in the near future covering multiple games again because I like doing that and it's fun and I think it's more worth your time, investment, and money because you're paying me, right? Um, that's all I got. Didn't get as much played on my vacation as I would have liked, truth be told. But got a few things played and just had good time playing the very few things that we did play. So again, as I mentioned with the bag part of that video, right? I brought way too many. Not as many as years past, but still way too many and played a bunch of small stuff instead of any of the big stuff, which is fine, because I just played some really good stuff that I really enjoy as a whole, some of the small box stuff. So anyway, that's all I got. I just got to get stuff played. I just got to get stuff played. I got to get stuff played. I got to get stuff played. I got to get stuff played so I can get some content and reviews out that I owe some people. So, you know, Seven Citadel. Uh, I've got uh, uh, Lewis uh, just sent me the uh, advanced copy of Keep the Heroes Out expansion. So I've got that. I've got uh, Yonder, which hopefully should be out this coming week, too. That's going to be the trickiest one if I can get that out by the time the campaign starts uh, on the 16th. We'll talk about that a little bit more, hopefully, in the news video tomorrow and the upcoming, but maybe not. I'm not sure where I'm going to be at in terms of that. So it's going to be a little crunchy of a weekend as a whole, I think. Uh, but I don't have any plans, right? So I'm done. I'm rambling. I'm going to get myself in trouble if I didn't already get myself in too much trouble already in this game in the first place, this video in the first place, this game in the first place. Blah. See? It's too late. 
it's too long and it's too much going on in my brain. So it's not working well. Stay classy. Have a great freaking day. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you made it this far. Mm. Small fry here. Peace out.